Hey everyone, Liam Motley here, and today I've got a video walking you through the true size of an AI niche and why this whole, oh, AI is saturated, it's too late, or like it's going to be saturated within a few years is complete rubbish. Um, and this is really going to make it clear to you if you're a beginner and you're on the fence and you think you might have been a bit too late for it, you see myself and others and people in the community who are making a lot of money from this stuff now and you think you're too late. Well, this is going to completely dispel that uh, that belief um, because it's just so <laughs> the true size of these niches is gigantic. And this video is really going to paint that clearly for you. Well, by the way, if you're new to the channel, don't know who I am. My name is Liam Motley. I've been building and selling AI solutions businesses um, through my own agency, Morningside AI, um, for the past nearly two years now. And I teach other people how to do that as well on this channel and through my programs and school community, etc. So if you want to make money and build a business in the AI space, Building AI solutions for businesses is by far the best way that I've found. And if you're talking about building solutions, you often need to niche down to really start to get the full benefits of the agency model in a more niched form. So if you're going to niche down at some point, you should watch this. And I highly suggest all of you try to niche down at some point, as I have done with my agency, Morningside AI, recently. So starting off, we have this handy little diagram here that I've made to kind of visually represent the size of these niches. And even if you get extremely niched down, um, later in this video, you'll see just how large those even tiny niches are and how untapped they are at this point. So we have this global market for AI solutions and businesses. So this is the entire world, all of the businesses and the, the demand or, or the market for AI solutions that can be sold to them. So this is any industry, any solution, any language as you'll see in a second. Um, but in this case, we're gonna be taking an example of a, an AI automation agency that's niched down to we build AI voice systems for small dental practices in Germany. So that's our, our criteria up here. Right, so from this global market, we're gonna niche down to just the dental industry, which is represented by this blue square here. Now, the dental industry may be smaller um, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. It's obviously not gonna take up what, like maybe one twelfth of the, of the world, of the total demand and uh, the total market. But for the sake of simplicity and being able to see it on this graph, or on this diagram, we're gonna keep it at this size. And so this global dental industry consists of, uh, at least from Claude's maths, 500,000 or more practices in the USA, European Union, UK, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. So I couldn't get too granular on like the Zimbabwe dental practice data, but um, I think this is a by and large, a good representation of, of 500,000 or maybe up to a million practices worldwide that you can sell these AI solutions to. For simplicity's sake, we could say that about a quarter of the demand or, or potential for solutions within that global dental industry would be for AI voice agents. So anything that's managing appointments and bookings, front of house stuff like you're going to see in a second, we could say that about a quarter of the value that could be created or, or the money that could be spent within the global dental industry would be in the voice agents space. And then even further, as this example that we're using is selling within the German speaking world, we are niched down then again from just AI voice agents in the dental industry to AI voice agents in the dental industry in the German language, which is just like a whole nother level of specialization. And that if you think about it, I can't with my agency, I can't go in and start selling German voice agents. I, I couldn't tell you if it worked or not because I don't speak German. So there's this whole level of specialization that um, and localization that all of you watching this in various different places around the world you have a massive advantage because you can compete. The stuff that we're building with AI is largely language-based, right? So it's voice agents, text-based agents, it's automations that are writing content. If you don't speak the language, you can't build and sell those solutions. So you have this moat where people like myself and these other guys who are targeting the US and, and the UK, et cetera, can't go into your localized market and compete because we don't speak your language. So this is a... a, a massive advantage for those of you who wanted to be specializing in certain areas and saying hey i'm going to take this instead of trying to go for the usa like many people immediately jump to at some stage sooner or later in the next couple of years dental practices within your local market in this case the german market will be adopting these like ai reception solutions which i'm going to show you an example of in a second but then if we take this one step further and say, okay, we sell this within the German market to dental practices that are less than 10 employees. Now we have this extremely small niche and you'd be like, oh, that's way too small. I'm not gonna be able to make any money. Well, if you look at the stats, there are 33,000 of these small practices, um, single practices owned by a single owner. So they're not like a, a chain in Germany. So there's 33,000 of them. Keep that number in your mind because that's what we're gonna be working off for the rest of this video. So entire market, and if we just keep niching down to an industry, in this case, also into a solution category of voice agents, and then into the language that we're building them in, which is German, and then to the size and specific kind of business that we want to sell them to. So it's built around and specialized for these smaller dental practices for a self-managed AI solution that's that's good for this smaller team and it's not really meant for, for the scale of larger um, like chains of, of dental practices, et cetera. So now you understand that we're looking at if we were these guys selling these these AI voice systems to dental practices, 
we would have a market of roughly 33,000 people. Then we can take this data and now run some calculations on what it would look like to actually set up a business or an AI automation agency selling these things within the space and the kind of saturation we'd see or competition within this very small market of 33,000 practices, right? So I've got a bit of a, a story here to tell you and this is gonna be uh, taking the example of Sarah and Alex, two tech savvy entrepreneurs who started, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, but it's basically AI dental solutions uh, translated to German and AI automation agency for dental practices in Germany in January, 2024. So they watched one of my YouTube videos talking about these voice agents. I'm actually filming one shortly. So make sure you subscribe for that. That's all about voice agents and what's selling successfully in the, in the market right now. Um, and they've checked out all the other channels like Giannis, Brendan, Simon, and Marks, and, and they've done their research on AI voice systems. And they decide based off Sarah's background in the dental industry, she knows that they could do better call handling and appointment setting and that the systems that they have set up are quite clunky. So they decided to build an AI receptionist system based off watching some of these guys' videos for small dental practices in Germany. Because these agents must speak German properly, they are one of the only specialists for voice AI solutions in Germany, let alone the dental industry as a whole. So their initial offer is their AI reception system, which is 2,500 euros up front and a 750 euro per month retainer, just for management and also usage costs and stuff like that. And so we are assuming that the customer churn is 5% per month here, and this is all gonna make sense in the end and tie back into how, how big or small these, these niches are and why the saturation thing is a bunch of bullshit. Um, but the customer churn, we'll call it at 5% per month. Say when they have a customer come on and be paying that retainer, you can expect at the end of the month, 5% of their customers would be churning and, and saying, okay, would like to no longer pay that retainer and we're going to a different system. But these things are very sticky because once you set it up for them, hey, look, we've got this working AI receptionist that's answering calls around the clock and booking things automatically in. It's extremely sticky because why would they change it? Why would they go, unless they're gonna try and like pay another 5,000 euros to someone else and then like get a lower retainer so they're gonna save more money, but it's just not worth the effort or the money. So if you're setting these systems up based off the work from uh, from Mark and, and these other guys I mentioned here, they're telling me that it's very sticky. Once they've got it set up, they are like, they're not churning at all because it, if it works, it works and they don't wanna bother with any of the setup with another system. So. 5% churn, long story short. And so starting off in January, this is like the hypothetical 12 months of this business and how it grows over time. We have Sarah and Alex beginning their cold email outreach, booking 10 calls per week and closing 10% of those. Um, so you can see the numbers here, I'll let you pause. But basically in January, they set up their cold email systems and got them dialed in and, and generating bookings for them. In February, they continue to do the cold email while they also expand their development team and tighten their delivery process and also the client management systems. So they're just making steady progress here. In March, they set up a referral program where they're adding one call per week to the calendar with a 50% close rate. So their past clients are referring them new clients with a quite higher close rate, making 25,000 euros in this month. They've got 13 on that retainer offer because there's summer churning and the total clients that they've signed is 14. In April, she starts working on her LinkedIn knowing that she needs to expand beyond just cold email. She positions herself as an expert of AI solutions for dental practices in the German market, but sees no immediate results. And monthly revenue here is about 30,000 euros, 20 clients signed in total. In May, Sarah's LinkedIn efforts start to pay off, generating five more bookings per week. They also launched an AI powered lead generation system as a 3,000 euro upsell with 30% of new clients opting into that offer and their close rate overall, just getting more experience and understanding, dialing in the offer, making it more attractive, getting better at, at selling and, and improving their sales process has improved their close rate from 10 to 15%, which is what you should be able to do over time with your agency if you're selling the same thing, you get better at selling it, right? And you also get more data from past clients. Um, so then they have the monthly revenue at 51,000 here with that jump from the uh, the upsells and also closing at a higher percentage. So the LinkedIn starting to produce results in May. They have improved their sales process and their close rate overall and they've expanded the offer to increase the lifetime value with this upsell. These are all the kind of steps you should be thinking about as you go through building these kind of offers. Then in June, they just keep doing what they're doing. Um, LinkedIn and cold email and upselling to that 3,000 euro offer. July, same thing again, just increasing steadily. Um, monthly revenue up to 62,000 in July with 47 clients signed in total and 41 on retainer. In August, Alex sets up a partnership with a dental equipment supplier, getting them four more bookings per week. So they're looking for partnerships now to diversify their lead sources. And they're up to 80,000 euros for the month of August. They've got this partnership kicking in. September, they just keep going as is. October, now that they've got that offer really dialed in, they're really familiar with it. They've, they've got the delivery systems all, all laid out and, and very systemized so that they can handle a lot of scale. They go and set up a cold calling team, adding 20 more bookings per week to the calendar. So they've hired a whole team and they're just dialing up every single one of those small dental practices throughout Germany. And that's leading to another 20 bookings per week. 
And this is really where things jump up for them. And they start going to 126,000 euros for the month. November, they continue to grow. These retainers keep stacking. And in December, they do 150,000 euros um, and 109 clients still on that 750 euro per month retainer, which is bringing in $82,000 of their, of their revenue for the month. Um, and note here that 105 active retainer clients, you'll either need some really bulletproof management systems um, or a, a really solid product that causes basically no issues, or you need to shift to a, a SaaS model that makes it easier to manage. Because managing 100 clients and they want little modifications or they've got a problem with it is, is just completely unmanageable. So this is where the caveat of you need to have over the past year built up some really solid management systems or switch to a more SaaS model. And so the whole point of me telling you that big long story is that now if you look at this market saturation breakdown of we had 33,000 single practices in Germany, right? So we have these single practices and group practices in total. We want these single ones because we're dealing with our niche is German dental practices, less than 10 employees, so really small businesses. And you'd think there'd be not, not many of them that you could serve in your market, right? 33,000 in total. And we can assume that 90% 90, 90 of these have less than 10. So there might be some of these practices that have more than 10 people, but let's say 90% of these have less than 10 people, which is our, our target market, our, our ICP. So the total potential clients within this market is 30,000 practices. And the, the results of Alex and Sierra over the past 12 months is 1,000 bookings. So they've taken 1,000 calls. They've signed 131 clients in total. Some of those have churned off. So you've got the 109 uh, clients on retainer at the end paying the 750 euros per month. And then when you do the math, it's 3.4% of businesses within this entire market that they've actually talked to and had a call with. And there's 0.43% of them that they've actually signed and have worked with. So even when you take this market of, okay, let's niche down to the dental industry. Okay, let's niche down to only selling AI voice agents. And we're just gonna help them with this AI receptionist offer. And I'm only gonna do it in the German speaking market. And I'm only gonna do it for small dental practices that are less than 10 employees. You have a market size of 30,000 businesses. And even after all this work and they're making 150,000 euros per month. Again, these numbers are, are representative, they're not, it's not exactly, you probably change your offer along the way here, if I'm honest. Like you wouldn't be banging out $2,500 offers in just a small retainer. You'd wanna try and increase and make, have a more valuable offer on the whole so you don't have to deal with as many clients on an ongoing basis. Or if you're really smart, you would just build it and leave and not bother with the retainer. But the retainer in this case is bringing in 82,000 a month. So you got, you'd have to decide and do the maths yourself on, on what you wanna get out of the business. But the point is, even with making this amount of money per month, they only have 109 out of 30,000 practices in the entire market on their offer. So this whole, like this is 12 months of, of rapid progress in this business. And these, the amount of people who are serving AI voice agent solutions within the dental industry in the German speaking market is probably zero right now. And if, you, if, if you're thinking this is like saturated or you've missed the boat or anything, there is still so much potential, even in these tiny little niches where you've gone down very specific to a small area of business that you wanna be working in. That's really the whole point of this video is to point out that you can be making a ton of money in a very small niche and have only worked with a tiny fraction of them or even contacted a tiny fraction of them and still have so much more room to grow. So if you're trying to say this is saturated and you've missed a boat or anything, then that's a load of rubbish and you're really sabotaging yourself from getting into this stuff and making a lot of money from it in the next few years because you're gonna look back in three, five years and start to, one day you're gonna call the dentist and you're gonna to talk to them and it'll be an AI receptionist. And you'll remember this video, you'll say, damn, I should have got an, I could have sold that system to them. You have that opportunity right now to get into this, start building these systems and be able to sell these and take advantage of this empty, they're empty, they're no one selling this stuff. And it's all gonna move that way sooner or later. So to finish off the video, when it comes to niching down, there are multiple different ways and angles and attributes to your to your niching or your ICP that you're trying to target. So you can niche down by industry, say I just do AI solutions for the real estate industry, or you can go a little bit further than that of a specific business type or niche, e.g. real estate agencies versus a real estate agent. They're gonna have different needs, of course. Then you can niche down by solution category. In this case, like we did, to AI voice agents. Say, look, we're not a specific type of AI voice agent, Actually, I mean, in the example we've given, they just do AI receptionist, but they do AI voice agents for, um, for their given niche, which was the dental industry in this case. Then you can go by the specific solution type, e.g. we would AI cold callers for real estate agencies. Um, and you can niche down by the business location, e.g. like we help um, real estate agencies in Florida do this with AI cold calling systems. And then we have the language, which is one of the main things I wanna point out to you in this video is that because these are language-based solutions, it's, it's voice, you're talking on the phone, you're chatting away to a chatbot, 
you have such an advantage in your home country to be selling these things because you are going to escape the competition. Stop trying to always go internationally and, and try to sell these to English speaking businesses. You have an advantage by playing the field at home because I can't come and compete with you. And there's, yes, you might get paid less locally, but go and find bigger businesses. The bigger the business, the more value they get out of these systems because the more volume the AI can handle. So go for the bigger businesses over time. You have to work up there through the through the smaller ones, of course. And the last two is niching down by business size, like we did in this case of a, a 50 person business will have different needs than say a, a less than 10. Like if you've got a very small team, you need different kind of assistance or AI systems that can help them than a bigger company, right? It's going to be much different. And finally, also the tech stacks. You could go even further, even more niche than this and figure out what the main types of software that these single practices are, are using. Say there's one type of dental CRM or, or appointment booking software that they use and maybe a third of the market is, is using that system. You can niche down even further and put like another... I don't even think I could make it this small on Figma, but we could go even smaller than this and say, okay, what's a third of the market? If there's this dental CRM that one third of these small practices are using, you can specialize your solution even further and say, we help this specific type of small dental practice who uses this software with our system, we can plug it in super easy. And it's probably gonna help you manage that scale a lot more of having like a hundred of these people on, on a retainer. So that's the true size of an AI niche and why this whole saturation thing is a bunch of bullshit. It is so untapped. In this case, I'd be willing to put money on it that there is not more than a handful of dental practices in the German speaking market that have AI receptionists on them. So completely untapped. We are still early to this. And there's no reason why you guys can't start right now. Even if you know nothing, watch some YouTube videos, get started because there is so much money to be made even in the smallest niches like this that it's just stupid if you don't take action on this now and be one of the first people to serve those niches. So that's all for the video. Forget the saturation rubbish. We are still so early to this opportunity. If you wanna watch another video from me explaining how you can get into and giving you some ideas for starting to sell AI solutions to businesses, I'll put one up there, one of my favorites. But aside from that guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.